The region D above lies between two red lines and the red parabola y equals 4 25ths x squared. It can be described in two ways. Number one, if we visualize the region having top and bottom boundaries, express each as a function of x and provide the interval of x values that covers the entire region. So notice how if we define this region as having a top and bottom boundary, the top boundary would be this horizontal line here, which has an equation y equals four. And the bottom boundary would be the parabola here, which we're given has an equation y equals 4 25ths x squared. So the top boundary, g sub 2 of x, is y equals 4. And because y equals g of x, g sub 2 of x is equal to 4. Again, this is our top boundary. Next, the bottom boundary, which we want to give as g sub 1 of x, would be y equals 4 25ths x squared, which notice how it's already given as a function of x, and therefore g sub 1 of x is equal to 4 25ths x squared. So here we have 4 25ths x squared. Of course, 4 25ths could also be expressed as 0 0.16. So we could also express this as 0.16x squared. And now we're asked to give the interval of x values that covers the region. So we've already defined the region having a top and bottom boundary. So now the x values that cover this region would be from here where x equals zero all the way out to this point here. Notice how this point would have coordinates one, two, three, four, five, comma, four. Notice how the x value here is five. So the intervals of x values that cover this region would be from x equals zero to x equals five. So here we have the closed interval from zero to five for x. Now let's visualize the region having right and left boundaries. The right boundary would again be the parabola here, given by the equation y equals four twenty-fifths x squared. The left boundary would be this vertical line here, which has the equation x equals zero. So for our right boundary, you notice how we want to express it as a function of y. Right now we have y as a function of x. So y equals 4 25ths x squared is the boundary to the right, but we need to solve this for x in order to have a function of y. So let's first multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4 25ths so we'll multiply both sides by 25 fourths, which would give us 25 fourths y equals x squared. And now from here, to solve for x, we would take the square root of both sides of the equation. Notice when we do this, though, we'd have plus or minus the square root on the left side of the equation. So we have x equals plus or minus, well the square root of 25 is five, the square root of four is two, so we have plus or minus five halves square root y. But notice how we are in the first quadrant where both x and y are positive. So for this piece of the graph, we only have to consider x equals positive five halves square root y, which means our function of y, f sub two of y, would be equal to five halves square root y. Remember, x is equal to f of y. So here we have five halves square root y. And now for the left boundary, we have x equals zero. Remember, x equals f of y, which means f sub one of y would be equal to zero. And then finally, we're asked to determine the interval of y values that cover the region. We'll notice how the lowest point in the region is here where y equals zero, all the way up to the highest part of the region, which is here, where y equals four. Which means the interval of y values that cover this region would be the closed interval from zero to four. Being able to define our boundaries in both of these methods is important when we begin to set up double integrals and determine the limits of integration. If we integrate with respect to y first and then x, we would use the method we used in number one, 
if we integrate the respect to x first and then y, we would use the method we used in number two. I hope you found this helpful.